much. Right. Right. Welcome, everyone, to the fifth meeting of the Justice Committee in 2015. Can I ask everyone to switch off mobile phones and other electronic devices? Uh, we have no apologies, although a couple of members have been delayed due to the weather. Item one, in private, the committee is invited to agree to consider item four, an EU engagement, and item five, an issues paper on the Prisoners' Bill in private. Are you agreed? Agreed. Item two, paper one sets out the current position with each of our ongoing petitions. I'll seek your views on each petition in turn. PE 1281, fatal acts and inquiries and deaths abroad. The committee has already agreed to consider this petition in the context of the forthcoming FAI legislation. We've received correspondence from the Minister for Community Safety and Legal Affairs setting out more detail on this legislation. Do members have any comments on the petition or the Minister's correspondence at Annex F, or are you content simply to note the issue? I'm looking around for some kind of inspiration. Am I, am I ahead of you too fast for you all? You're very slow today, gentlemen and ladies. That's PE 1280. I think so. You agreed? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, PE 1370, Independent Inquiry into the McGrahe conviction. The committee has received record of the latest media being justice from McGrahe and Police Scotland and correspondence from JFM highlighting recent comments by Lord Advocate on the, on the McGrahe investigation. Do members have any comments the material received? Are you content to simply note the updates and developments in the SCCRC application referred to in the paper, which I should say the application of the court will be sub judice. So that's just a little cautionary, cautionary line for you. Now, do you wish to just content and continue this to see the outcome of the other matters that are ongoing. Yeah. John? Convener, I'm pleased the committee is content, but I think it is important to, to pick up on some of the comments made by, by the Justice for McGrathy people, not least the role of the Lord Advocate, in the broadest sense, not specifically relating to the, any ongoing matter. Um, you know, we have a situation where September 2012, December 2012, and more recently in December, um, of last year, the Lord Advocate, in my mind, has compromised the potential for him to be viewed as a, um, an honest broker when it comes to receiving the report from Police Scotland. So whilst I'm delighted that Police Scotland get a ringing endorsement from Justice for McGrathy Committee um, for, for the diligent work they're doing, I think there are challenges ahead that won't just relate to the delivery of these particular reports to the Crown Office Procurator Fiscal Service, which we may have some regard to in the future. Gil. Yeah, it's, a, it's a similar point. But I go in the opposite direction, so I would, you know, I would need to get uh, some in, uh, advice on this at some point. M my my view was, uh, if we take, if we set aside this particular one, but just talk about the generality of people who have been convicted, that I think the Crown Office automatically makes an assumption, uh, and that is that they're guilty after they've been convicted, and they will defend that position uh, regardless. regardless. Uh, except when new evidence is brought uh, forward for them to, to consider, maybe an appeal or something like that. So my, my view has always been, well, my understanding was that no matter what, what, what crime has been committed, you, you couldn't have the Crown Office. Uh, it's, no, it's no a maybe is I and a maybe is no. Uh, it's, it's a clear, somebody's convicted, that's how it is, and it will stay that way, and that's what they'll defend until new evidence comes forward. That, that, well, that, I would need some advice. I think that. it's appropriate that if somebody's been convicted, they're considered that they were guilty. Um, otherwise, we, we, we have turmoil within the justice system. But I take your point. I've got some comment to make on that myself. Could, yes. I just wanted to highlight um, the, the fact that, uh, as DCC Livingston says in the note, uh, an independent QC has been appointed to provide the police investigation with an appropriate level of scrutiny prior to reporting the findings to the Crown Office which is clearly not normal procedure. So there, yeah. there is uh, an acceptance that this is an unusual situation. So I, I think, think Mr Finney's comments should be uh, tempered with that. Tempered was the word I was thinking about. I think the issue also, however we get to the nub of it, how, who investigates the Crown? The Crown can't investigate the Crown, the Crown, so we do have that. I think that's where you're going with your comments. Is yes, it? indeed, and that's the area we looked at before. Yeah. And uh, Mr Finney always seeks to temper his comments, and believe you me, these are extremely <laughs> tempered comments than what I would like to say. But what I, I think there's an obligation on this committee, and that is when respected citizens are called conspiracy theorists and 
accusations they make in good faith are described as deliberately false and misleading, then that does not suggest an open posture being adopted by the Crown Office Procurator Fiscal Service. Theorist John, do you think uh, I don't members consider of myself a conspiracy theorist. Uh, Margaret. I think the point to be is um, we're waiting a judgment by the Lady Justice Court on Thursday. Yes, Seventh of March regarding supporting evidence for McGrackey's family, you know, supporting the, their involvement. I, I did mention, in fact, you can mention that, but that's as far as we can go because it's some judice. So it makes sense that we... It's a connected thing. We have the police matter, then we have whether or not there'll be a further appeal. But I think with all these things in the it air, it is appropriate to continue, to continue the petition. Yeah. And the issues you've raised will no doubt come out if this goes any further. Um, in terms of the appeal procedure. I think, I think that's the case. So we continue the petition. Thank you very much. Multi-party actions, PE 1427. The committee previously wrote to the Scottish Government inviting it to include the petitioner in its consultation of matters to be taken forward by primary legislation on recommendations from the Taylor Review to respond to the petitioner's concerns raised regarding withholding documents by private company. The Scottish Government has been invited to respond by 3rd of April. Are you content to keep it open pending the response from the Scottish Government? Makes sense. Sorry. Indeed. I, I, I that, thought you would say it doesn't I make sense. I think there's a further consultation on aspects of Taylor announced by the government. Yeah, when either Taylor and last week. And that's one the petitioners yeah. can be included in. Thank yeah. you for that additional information. We continue this. P1479, Legal Profession and Legal Aid Time Bar. The committee previously agreed to keep this petition open pending the outcome of the Scottish Legal Complaints Commission's consultation on increasing the legal aid time bar from one year to three years. This consultation closed on 17 November last year. The new time bar was due to become operational from 1st January this year. However, the SLCC has decided that the time bar provisions will now be altered in July 2015 to coincide with the ADR directive coming into force with the start of a new operational year for the SLCC. I don't have any further information on what these time bar alterations would be. What are they? We, we don't have any information on it, but something is in the air again. Um, do you want to keep the petition open until after the SLCC rules change? Yes. That's taken effect. Right, OK, we'll keep that going. P1501, public inquiries into self-inflicting accidental deaths following suspicious death investigations. The committee previously wrote to the Crown Office and the PF Service uh, to ascertain the level of investigation carried out into the 4,000 deaths classified as self-inflicted in the last five years. The committee also agreed to consider the petition in the context of the forthcoming FEI legislation. We have received a response from COPFAS and a letter from the Minister about this petition. Petitioners indicate that the forthcoming FEI legislation is unlikely to directly address the issues in his petition. And the Minister has restated the Scottish Government's position that it has no plans to introduce proposals along the lines requested by the petitioner. After the meeting papers were published, the petitioner contacted the clerks to advise that he would like the opportunity to respond to the points raised in the COPFAS letter. Are members content to invite the petitioner to respond to that letter and to consider this response when it's received? That's only just. Thank you very much. So continue that one. P1510 and 1511, police and fire control rooms. The committee last considered these petitions in the context of an evidence session with the police and fire inspectors. Audit Scotland is due to publish a report on the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in the spring. And as part of our ongoing monitor of fire reform, we may hold an evidence session with SFRS in autumn 2015. Would members be content to close these petitions or would you prefer to consider them during our next session with SFRS? Is there life out there? I look, I look in vain. Is it a drop in the temperature that's frozen the brain cells? Insofar as decisions have been made and are operational, it's a bit after the event. But um, I'd, uh, I don't want to stifle uh, petitioners. Well, I think it, it, my feeling, if you're not going to say anything, is that Audit Scotland, due to publish a report, once we have that report, we could have an evidence session on it. I mean, yeah. we certainly don't want to leave it undone. But yeah. I think that gives you the chance to go back yeah, okay. and see the impact. So we'll do that. Thank you. So that's closed, but we're going to undertake an evidence session. It's, it's closed because we're going to have an evidence session, I think. Is that right? What do you want to do? Sorry, am I moving too fast? Keep it open and do the evidence Mark, session. Mark I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm yeah. easy peasy either way. Yeah. Open and then the Open and an evidence yeah. session after the Audit and Scotland then report. Decide where we go after then that. decide what to do. Yeah. Christian, you've yeah. come alive. Yeah. And then decide if you want to have an Correct. Evidence. That's where we are. Right. Um, 
Item 3, sub ledge. Uh, consideration of two negative instruments. The first is the Victim and Witnesses Scotland Act 2014 Prescribed Relatives Order, SSI 2014-360. This instrument defines those relatives of victims to which measures introduced by certain sections of the Victims and Witnesses Scotland Act 2014 apply. Do you have any comments in relation to the statutory instrument? Are members content to make no recommendation? I need to have a sound out of you to, 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 for the OR. Thank you. <laughs> the second negative instrument for our consideration is the Civil Jurisdiction and Judgments Amendment Scotland Regulations 2015. That's SSI 2015 1. This makes provision to further facilitate the application of Scotland of Regulation number 1215 2012 on jurisdiction and the recognition and enforcement of judgments in civil and commercial matters. Do you have any comments in relation to that instrument? Thank you very much, Mr Patterson. Are members content to make no recommendation in relation to this instrument? Thank you very much. We now move into private session.